أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي كان موجودا قبل حدوث الأشياء ويبقى بعد فناء الأشياء تفرد بالأولية والقدم ووسم كل شيء ما عداه بالفناء والعدم كما قال عز شأنه كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه وكل نفس ذائقة الموت وقال كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك للجلال والإكرام والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة صلوات We are discussing the importance of إدخال السرور to cause happiness for your brothers in faith for the people who are around you and you are by and your friends, your family members, or in general, any human being. So when you cause happiness for him, this is what Islam wants us to do, to establish a society based on love and justice and peace and happiness. And this is not possible unless every, every person in the society practices uh, the teachings of Quran and Ahlul Bayt which are based on uh, love and, and justice. So here Imam, after mentioning so many rights in his book, now he speaks about the right of the person by whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you any kind of happiness. Because Allah has created cause and effect in this world and anything that you receive, any bounty or any help you receive in this world is through someone uh, or something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. So original helper and supporter is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and original help comes from him. So first thing that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any good thing that you receive. Of course, this is uh, uh, the life that you sometimes feel happy and sometimes you feel sad. These are two situations in which we remain always in our life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Always there is ease with hardship. Always there is ease with hardship. So hardship comes and we get sad. And ease and uh, joy come and we get happy and joyous. In both situations, we should not forget the original cause of these two things. Sadness could be because of our sins or somebody else may be responsible for that. In both situations, how to deal with those hardships that we are facing uh, and uh, how to deal uh, with those conditions. Sabr and shukr, these two words has been repeated so many times in Quran so that we can be able to uh, deal with the situations in which many people go into stress or depression. But a mu'min never 
goes in such situations. Why? Because the comfort and the peace of mind and peace of heart comes uh, through the dhikrullah, ala dhikrullah, tatma'in al When you invoke the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives you comfort uh, of mind, comfort of, of, of heart, so you don't feel so much sad about yourself. Yes, our sadness becomes uh, intense when we really feel that we have done something wrong with someone, somebody else, and it is called zulm. If we have wronged someone, we should remain sad until the person we wronged him, he forgives us, and we uh, provide some remedy for the damage that we, he, you know, you know, we caused him for, for any reason. That is, yeah, a reason for sadness. But if something that we, f uh, we uh, face in this world, the, you know, regular hardship, it should not be cause for our sadness. We should be sad only if we cause sadness to somebody else or we uh, do something against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one aspect of our life. The other aspect of our life is happiness. So many times we are sad, as I said, and other times we are happy. When we are happy, who is the cause of this happiness? We should not forget the cause of happiness. Ihsan, goodness and favor, is something good. But the person who is causing this, who is, who is giving this favor, and this ihsan is called muhsin. We should not forget a muhsin. We should not forget the person who is giving us the favor. There are so many hadith and riwayat in which our a'imma alayhi salatu wasalam has emphasized on this very important aspect of our life. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam says that anybody who, ma who makes someone happy, and especially if he is a believer and follower of Ahlul Bayt and if you, if you make him happy, Imam says, by God, by Allah, this person who made a mu'min, a believer happy, he did not make him happy, rather he had uh, you know, he caused us to be happy. So he made us happy and he made Rasulullah happy and he made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu salam has a riwayah says that when you do anything good with somebody, you help him in any way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create by this act of help or making other people happy, Allah will create an angel. And this angel will appear in human form in the time of death of a mu'min. When, of course, this, this is a time when everyone who is leaving this world, who is leaving his family, leaving his children, leaving whatever he has done in this life, he is abandoning everything, and he is departing to next world, akhirah. This is very hard for him. In this such a hard time, he sees that somebody is with him until he enters his grave. After his death, or in the time of his death, until he enters the grave, this person is following him. He's with him, helping him, giving him comfort, and giving him company, 
reducing his sadness and sorrow, giving him um, happiness and joy. Until in Qabr, he remains with him. Then in the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises everybody from the Qabr, we again will see this, this person is there. Helping him, making him happy, making him smile, making him comfort, you know, feel comfortable. In such a situation, of course, those uh, stations are very hard stations for uh, everyone. So in the day of judgment, also we'll see this person. In all situations, in every place, we will see this guy or this person or this man uh, in, in, in a human form. So he will ask him every time that who you are, who coming to help me. I don't know you. I never see, you know, saw you in, in, in my life, but you are so nice, so kind, so good person, good companion. You help me every, in, in every situation. So this person is going to say, that I am that act of goodness and act of kindness that you showed to some uh, of the believers, of somebody in your life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me. Your action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned this action into my form. So I am the one. Who uh, originally it is your action and your action, good good deed with other people. So this is what Imam says. It means never think, never in your life that you are if if, if you are doing good with somebody, it is something uh, you know uh, that you ignore it. Something important. Do it again. Do it again. And. In one of the rewind that even if you can help somebody with a piece of death, piece of death, don't say I don't have to help someone. Always be generous. Always try to help people. Help your neighbors. Help your family members. Even if you do, when you go for a job, of course, you're working. Eight hours, ten hours, many people work 12 hours, when you, you know, even more. You are working for what? Make your intention to work so that you can help your family. This intention makes, will make your job that you are working there, you're working very hard, and you're getting some money. But that work, Allah will make it, Allah will turn it into an ibadah. It will uh, be considered as a great worship if you have the intention even to help your own family. You say, okay, I'm working this hard so that I can help my children, help my family, my wife. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward for uh, your good intention and for your work and your work will become an act of worship, not just a job or not just uh, earning money. So this is what we are discussing so far. And we see in the, in the lifetime of Ahlul Bayt, in the practice of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wasalam. Many times we have seen that our Imma, alayhi salam, they are in a state of worship. They are in Masjid, for example. They are in Atikaf. They are sitting for, in, you know, in the Masjid, and in the Masjid, when some Somebody is in the masjid for atikaf. Atikaf is a, a form of ibadah in Ramadan. You do it while you are fasting. You stay in the mosque for three days. You forget everything. No job, no work, no school, no nothing. You, you, you forget everything. Just sit and read Quran, supplications, salah, and everything. Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, He says that if I help a mu'min, if I make somebody smile, if I 
give joy and happiness to a mu'min, I, I, to me, it is more than doing. This is i'tikaf, sitting in the masjid, just praying and doing the worship and reading Quran and doing all those good things. And he said, and, and in fiqh, Islamic fiqh, you know, in Islamic laws, you cannot get out of that masjid while you are in a situation of i'tikaf. Except if a mu'min needs your help and he depends on your help, then you leave this and go. Not only i'tikaf. When you start your salat, you cannot break your salat. You cannot break your salat. It's haram, it's forbidden, it is considered a sin after you start your salat, you break it uh, before you finish it. The only, you know, time it is allowed to break your, your, your salat is when you need to help someone. Someone needs your help, and really, this help depends on you. And you know that, okay, if I keep praying, he might lose something. And he might uh, uh, be deprived of, of, of health, of wealth, of his life, or anything. So you should go and quickly help him. You can break your salat to help a mu'min while uh, he depends on your help. So there are so many things. Look, Amir al-Mu'minin, for example. Many times we see uh, the practice of Ahlul Bayt from just one aspect. Aspect of their merits and excellence. Of course, this is, this is the, the first thing we should look at, uh, you, know, with, you know, from this aspect. But the practice of Ahlul Bayt the teachings of uh, Quran and Ahlul Bayt have so many dimensions. And we should look from every single dimension to it so we can benefit from Quran and Ahlul Bayt. And Ahlul Bayt salam, are the practical explanation of Quran. Sometimes you, you find a book, it's called Tafsir, Exegesis of Quran. Is explaining Quranic ayat and giving you the meaning of Quranic ayat. This is just a book which is explaining, or the hadith of Rasulullah. This is but practically, if you want to see practical tafsir of Quran, are Ahl Bayt and their uh, sirat, their practice of Ahl Bayt. You see, in Salat, while you are in Salat, you cannot move. You cannot move your hands, you cannot move yourself, you cannot do anything. You cannot pay attention around you. You just pay attention in, in your salat. And who is better than Amir al muminin as an example for us? When he would offer salat, he would be so much engaged in, in this worship that he would, you know, ignore everything around him. Everything. He was so much in there. One time somebody came to Janabi Fatima, salamullah alayha. The wife of Imam Ali, alayhi salam, when he, you know, came to, to her, started just shouting and crying, what happened? He said, oh, the daughter of Rasulullah, do you know what happened? What happened? Amir al-Mu'minin died. Imam Ali died, your husband. He said, how do you know that? What happened? He was okay just uh, a while ago. He was fine. What happened to him? He said, I saw him for a long time in sajda. In sajda, without any movement. I could not even hear his breath. And for a long time, and it was in sajda, in prostration situation. Janabe Sayyidah Salamullah Alayha. Allah, 
said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is his situation always when he goes to sajda. Always he looks like what you are, you know, uh, you're looking now. Don't worry about him. He is alive. He is fine. But when he goes to sajda, he, he does the ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way as he is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he shows the ibadah. He, he does the ibadah in such a way. So he is fine. Don't worry about him. One day, an arrow hit his, his leg. This is a very, very, very famous, you know, uh, story, and you have heard it from your childhood. But we look it from one aspect. So, people try to take this arrow out of his, his uh, uh, foot. It was hard, hard, an arrow. An arrow goes in the, uh, in the feet, in, inside the foot. It's hard to take it out, and especially for him. So he, it was very hard. Many times people try to do it, but he could not bear the, the pain. So much pain to take this out. People came to Amir to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and explained the situation. Rasulullah said, "It's so easy to take it out from his foot. How? How, ya Rasulullah? How is it easy? It's very hard. No, it's very easy." Let him go to sajda. When he is in the state of salat and sajda and prostration in prayers, take the arrow out. He will not feel it. He will not feel it. And this literally happened. This literally happened. This true story of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And we hear it every time. But look. How he is engaged in salat, how he is into the worship, into the salat. That he is not even feeling such a pain while he is in sajda. Now, why I mention the excellence of his, his worship and ibadat and prayers? Only for this point to make. The same Imam Ali alayhi salam, when he's, he is in sajda, he is in ruku, he is in salat, people think that he is he's no more alive, he's he dead. Or an arrow can be taken out from his, his foot easily without he, he, he feels it. So some, someone who is so much in ibadat, remember, this is the point, this is the main point I'm you know, making here. We should look to his sirat and his excellence and his merits from this aspect also. So now the same person, same Imam, same Imam Ali alayhi salam, he is in the same ibadat salat. He is in ruku. And he hears somebody asking for help. How this Imam who does not feel the pain of taking then arrow out of his feet. He can feel the pain of a beggar who is asking for help. He's feeling that pain. He says, no, he's painful. His voice is painful. He's asking everybody for help. And he is in Salat. Imam Ali is in Salat. In Salat, he forgets everything around him. He does not pay attention to anything but Allah. But here he is paying attention to someone who is asking for help in the mosque. What does this mean? It means the real ibadah, if you want to see what does ibadah mean and worship mean, it is helping people, it's real worship. This is what he's teaching us through his practice. Don't look 
to your ibadah and think, okay, I am worshipping very much. I'm a good worshipper. I, I pray this much. I do this good, this good, this good. But I'm not good with people. I don't care about, you know, about uh, you know, other people. I don't help people. I don't have time to help people. I don't want to spend my money that I am earning with hardship myself to help other people. No, no, I don't care. If you say this, you are not a Muslim. Your worship is not worship. Your salat is not salat. This is Amir al-Mumin al-Salaam. In salat, he is helping a person. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed the ayah. إِنَّمَا وَلْيُكُمُ اللَّهِ Authority for you is Allah. وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمُنُوا وَالَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ And those people who, who give charity while they are in the state of ruku, in the state of salah. It doesn't mean that we also start giving uh, charity in the state of salah. It doesn't mean that. It means that don't take it easy. If somebody is asking for help, he should not go back empty-handed. He should take something from you. You should help him somehow. And your help will become part of your ibadah, part of your salat, in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises him, And they give, while subhanAllah, look, in the same ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first has mentioned that the people who offer salat, وَالَّذِينَ آمُنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ Those who offer salat. Ruku is part of salat. So Allah has mentioned ruku already in salat. But he is mentioning this special ruku separately, separate from the whole salat. Why? Because this ruku became so special because this ruku was combined with helping someone needy. If you combine any of your worship, any of your action, any of your amal with helping people, that particular action will become so special in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will praise you if it is really sincere. And Allah will give it to you. Allah will give immediately. Imam Ali gave him his ring. You know the story. I'm not mentioning the story. The time is over. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gave him the whole wilayat. Allah gave him the whole authority on the entire world. Of course, he has given him before, but he mentioned it in the Quran so that every Muslim until the day of judgment is going to praise Imam Ali by reciting this ayat, and he has no choice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to follow the foot steps of our imams, Imam Ali alayhi salam and other imams. Inna ahdan al-hadith wa ablagh al-mu'adhi kitab Allah a'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim bismillahi al-rahman al-rahim wa al-asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat nutawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr